And we know that we're in a new season, right? Through all that's transpired with COVID, but it's like now we're on the other side. And come on, ladies, we can't go back to the old way. It's a new day. It's a new season that we're in, right? And God doesn't want you to miss any part of what he is doing in this season, what he's doing through it all. And, you know, as church meetings and, and other social gatherings, family events, things like that, we've not been able to gather corporately like we're used to, right? And people have found themselves more and more often, like, away from the crowds, right? And you found yourself in more times where you were alone, you were by yourself. God said, I'm going to use this to bring about a paradigm shift in my church church a paradigm shift come on something transpiring in the spirit where he's inviting each one of us individually to take on like a greater ownership of the work of the kingdom inwardly and around us where we're so used to where where we're making where, where we're becoming faithful custodians faithful stewards come on carriers of the glory of God you see, back when we think of Israel, when they, were, when they left Egypt, their place of bondage, and they were going through the desert, right, the great exodus, it said that they followed a pillar of cloud by day. They followed a pillar of fire by night. And it, it was that. They followed corporately all together. They followed the leading of this fire, this pillar of fire, out of bondage and into their promised land. And together, the Israelites, they follow or they followed the cloud, right? And they experienced the manifestation of God's glory corporately. And they moved together, following the cloud, following the fire. And there was only one man, Moses, one man, right, who would actually go and meet with God face to face. And the rest, they just followed him and followed the pillar of fire. They followed the cloud. But then in Acts chapter 2, we have what we call Pentecost. We have what we call Pentecost, where they were all waiting in the upper room for the baptism of the Holy Spirit in fire. And each one of them received their personal pillar of fire. They weren't all just going to be following one pillar and moving all together in a crowd. Each one of them was given an individual pillar of fire, an individual measure, an individual deposit, so that you would be a carrier of God's glory. So that you would be empowered and led by the Spirit of God through life. And in Acts chapter 2, when it talks about the wind coming in and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, right? That came on them. It said, that came on them in the form of tongues. It says, they were all filled and they were equipped with the Holy Spirit. And they were inspired to speak in tongues. And there's two words there, two Greek words that are actually used for filled. One means to be filled inwardly. One means to be filled outwardly. Filled inwardly furnished equipped outwardly inwardly for life outwardly for ministry inwardly for the fruit of the spirit outwardly for the gifts of the spirit come on both and together is the full life in Jesus Christ and it's Holy Spirit in me and Holy Spirit all on me. It's Holy Spirit for me and Holy Spirit through me for the people around me. And God is awakening his church to the gift as you have had more time alone, as you have had more time in isolation, away from the crowds. What he is doing is he is wanting the church to move from you're just being moved in your corporate gatherings. You're just being moved in a corporate setting. When you come here and you have these great worship experiences and you hear a great sermon he's saying I want you to I want you to follow the pillar of fire that I have given you I want you to activate the pillar of fire that I have individually given you so that you're just not moved in these corporate settings, but that each one of you expands your inner capacity for the life of Christ. You're empowered individually for the ministry of Jesus, temples of the Holy Spirit, carriers of glory, stewards of the kingdom. You know, Acts chapter 2 was the fulfillment of the promise that Jesus gave to his disciples. John 14, 26, 27. He was getting ready to leave, to go to heaven, to leave this earth. And he told his disciples, he said he was going to join his father in heaven. And he promised them, I will ask the father and he will give you another one. 
another helper, another friend, just like me, just like I've been for you, right by your side, listening to you, giving you feedback, encouraging you, discipling you, guiding you. He said, I will give you another helper, another friend just like me, so that he may be with you forever. Verse 17, he's the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. The world can't receive him. They don't see him. They don't know him. But you know him. You can know him intimately. He abides in you and will be in you and will not leave you as orphans. I will not leave you as orphans, says the Lord. I will never leave you helpless. I will never abandon you. I will come to you. It says, after a little while, the world no longer will see me. But you're going to see me because I live in you. And you also will live. Come on, you're going to come alive too. As Jesus was resurrected, you will come alive with the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit of God. As you make room for him. As you increase your capacity for more of him. Did you hear that? He causes you to come alive inside. You know, and in those verses... The Holy Spirit, the word that's used is helper. And I think Elizabeth mentioned this earlier. That word helper translates into parakletos. That's where we get paraclete from. Like, like, you know, crutches, right? You put them, what does it do? It lifts you up. It holds you strong. It moves you, allows you to move forward, right? And that means advocate, intercessor, consoler, comforter, helper. Holy Spirit also does from the inside of us what Jesus did for his disciples when he was engaging with them in their human interactions, right? Here on the earth, teaching, convicting, reminding, and guiding. And let me read this to you. Romans chapter 8, 26 to 28 says, Now in the same way, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness. For we don't know how we're to pray, what to pray as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that in all things God causes all things to work together for good. To those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. See, but I want to point something out to you really important for you to take away. That last verse 28 begins with and. And God causes all things to work together. That word and lets us know that's a conjunction, meaning that that verse 28 is fully dependent on verses 26 and 27, that we allow ourselves to be led by the Spirit as in life. We're led by the Spirit in our prayer. We're led by the Spirit in our decrees. So much frustration rises up in us because we don't see answers to our prayers, because we don't see the shifts, because we don't see the transformation, and yet we forget we don't know what to pray we don't know what to say we don't know how we're supposed to do life but Holy Spirit does and when we make room for him and when we yield to him oh he causes all things to work together 